My name is Eleanor. I'm a senior geology major at the College of William and Mary, and today I'm going to talk to you about the three laws of sedimentary geology. First, original horizontality. Second, the law of superposition. And third, cross-cutting relations. Important to remember that these laws only apply to sedimentary rocks because of the way that they're formed. Sedimentary rocks form when sediment, or tiny little pieces of rock, is deposited or laid down in a particular place. And then, as more and more sediment gets deposited on top of it, it gets compacted and squished together until it's finally squished enough that we can call it a rock. We're going to start with original horizontality. Basically, it's what it sounds like. Originally, meaning when a sedimentary rock is formed, it's deposited or laid down in a horizontal flat layer. But what if sediment is being deposited on a slope? Well, due to the effects of gravity, it will fall down and deposit in a flat layer at the bottom of the slope. And what if we see layers that are folded like this? Well, we know that due to original horizontality, they must have been flat lying at first, and then were subjected to a force called a stress that causes the rocks to strain or bend. Moving on to the principle of superposition. If you know the word superimpose, you can probably guess what this one is all about. Essentially, new layers of rock are laid down on top of the older layers. Just like this, the youngest layer is the layer that is on top. You can't have newer sedimentary rocks forming underneath older layers because of the way that these rocks form, being deposited and then buried by newer sediment. Now for cross-cutting relations. This one is also pretty much just what it sounds like, but it can also apply to certain igneous rocks that form in what we call dikes, vertical intrusions of igneous rock through sedimentary rocks, and is also applicable to certain features, like faults. To form a dike, we first need to start with a series of sedimentary layers. If there's a crack in these layers, sometimes magma from below can force its way into the crack and cool, forming a dike. As you can see, this dike only crosscuts the layers that had formed before it intruded. Faulting is another structure that occurs after the formation of a set of layers but it begins with a weak plane to which a force is applied. When packages of rock move along it, this plane becomes the fault plane and is indicated by a half arrow on either side to indicate the direction of motion. Cross-cutting relations describes the relative age of rocks. Essentially, you can't cut through something that's not there. So, all the rocks that a dike or a fault cuts through have to be formed before that dike or fault, which can be very helpful in determining the age of certain rocks, or at least their relative age, in a rock face. Now I'm going to walk you through using the sedimentary laws to determine the relative ages of rocks and structures in a cross section. We'll start with horizontal layers to which we apply an uneven force. This causes the layers to tilt, forming the structures that we see here. After we have these tilted layers, we get more deposition on top of them. Horizontal layers, as per the principle of original horizontality. After these layers are deposited, because they're exposed to the elements, we get some erosion occurring. This erosion event creates an uneven surface, which is still visible in the rock record, even after we have more flat-lying deposition on top of it. We see a weak plane develop in these flat layers above the erosional surface, and when an uneven force is applied, we get faulting, like we saw in the example before. While this is a very simplified diagram, you can still tell that it's a reverse fault, in which the hanging wall is upthrown. The overhang created by this fault is particularly susceptible to erosion, which will occur 
creating another uneven surface in the rock record. On top of this, we have more deposition, and after that, a crack develops in the entire rock sequence. Eventually, this crack widens, and magma is able to intrude and cool, forming a dike, which cuts through the whole sequence that is there at this time. After the dike forms, though, we have deposition on top, creating a layer in which the dike doesn't intrude, which is then eroded to create the surface topography of the region. Now, we'll label each layer and put them in order, along with the deformational events that are important in the history of this area. We'll start with the oldest and go to the youngest. First, we had I, H, and G deposited, followed by a tilting event. Then, J and F were deposited, followed by erosion. E, C, and D were deposited and faulted, then eroded, followed by the deposition of B, the intrusion of K, and the deposition of A, and more erosion. Here's an image for you to practice on. You might need to review some parts of the video, but you should be able to figure out the ages on your own. I've posted a link to the image that we were just talking about in the video description below, so I hope you'll check that out, see if you can figure out the age of each of the units, and then you can check out the solutions video that I've posted. There's a link to it right here, there's a link to it in the description. And no cheating, you have to look at the image and think about it on your own first. I've also posted some helpful sedimentary geology links that should get you started on any other questions you might have, but also feel free to ask questions in the comments, and one of us William & Mary geologists will get back to you. Thanks, I hope you learned something, and have a great day.